she comes across like diamonds, diamonds Easy in love when the lights are low She comes in to focus, focus The closer she gets, the more I know She takes more whiskey than my wine, I wine Hi! This week I have some really premium whiskeys that I'm going to go through. Like like really top of the line kind of whiskeys. But I got to start somewhere first. So I'm going to go here with a large bottle. It's 1.14 liters of Kato's. Now, uh, I have a little question in my mind as to the pronunciation of Kato's. Um, back when I was in high school, long, long decades ago, there was a math teacher in our high school, and his name was Mr. Cato. He spelt it the same as this, C-A-T-T-O, but they pronounced it Cato. So the question is, is this supposed to be pronounced Cato or Cato? I don't know for sure. Maybe somebody from Scotland or Ireland can correct me on that. Um, this is a Scotch whiskey, blended Scotch whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Take a look at this bill of sale. Last week I spilled some Lot 40 on it. I don't know how I did that. I was just such a being clumsy and trying to do two things at the same time, and I spilled some Lot 40 on my bill of sale. So the bill of sale is hard to read now. It says Cato or Cato. $37.99. So don't forget, this is 1.14 liters. Um, 37.99 uh, plus um, $3.8 $3 dollars for goods and services tax. Um, $1.90 for um, actually goods and service tax is $1.90. It's $3.80 for the liquor tax plus a dime, one tenth of a dollar, one ten dime for the bottle deposit. Grand total of $43.79 Canadian dollars out the door. $43.79 Canadian out the door. So, for 44 bucks, what do you get? 40% twisting cap. A large bottle, but if I don't like this, it's going to take me forever to finish. But it might be a good starter whiskey. I'm guessing just from the color of it, there's some sherry cask involved. There's probably a little bit of peat involved. There's probably a little bit of everything in here because that's what blended scotches usually include. Blended Scotch whiskey, Scotland, 1861. Mr. James Cato, or Cato, a pioneering local businessman, perfects his complex blend of fine highland single malt and delicate lowland grain whiskies. James Cato and Company, or is it Cato? Distilled, bottled, and blended in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. Uh, <coughs> return for refund where applicable. There's even a UPC barcode on it. And on the front it says, Product of Scotland, rare, old, Scottish. 40% alcohol by volume. Nothing else on there except that. So, maybe we got a good starter whiskey for a while. Or something I don't like. <laughs> we'll see. Um, they probably sell quite a bit of this. What can we expect? Sheeting action and... Rows of droplets, vertical rows of droplets. Ah, right away, I'm getting plums and figs, raisins, 
So I was right, there is some sherry cask involved here. It's no age statement, so it's probably three years in a day. And for the price, you can't really go wrong. So what did we say, 4380? Um, 4380, 4380 times 750 divided by 114 oh is equal to 2882. 2882 for a 750 mil is what it would cost at the same rate as this. That's about as cheap as you can get for Canadian whiskey. I, or it's about as cheap as you can get for whiskey in Canada for a 750 mil. 28 bucks. What's cheaper than that? Well, there's Alberta Premium, which is like $27. So this is bottom shelf Bonanza here. I'm not getting any peat on the nose, but I am getting those dark, dark, ripe, dried fruits. Figs, dates, raisins, prunes. Hint of blueberry. Mild, mild, mild hint of caramel. It's covered up by those dark dried fruits. I'm expecting something similar to White and Mackay. Let's give her a taste. Hmm. Okay. At first, there's what you would expect. Figs, dates, raisins, prunes, that kind of thing. But as it transitions, there's, there's a little bit of peat coming through. A little bit peat and sweetness and uh, a burst of toffee caramel which just is there for like half a second and foomp gone. Short finish. But wait. Let's do this a second time. Oh yeah. Okay. The dried dark fruits, the raisins, the prunes, the figs, the dates at first. Mid palate, you get a, a, a whiff of peat, but it's a short one. It's short. And there's a little bit of a toffee caramel thing, which is just there for an instant and foomp gone. The finish. A little bit of sweetness, a little bit of a, a note that you have, have had something alcoholic. It's a note of alcohol in there on the finish, and it, and it just kind of fades. I'm going to do that one more time after a sip of water.
Yeah. You know, from the get-go, from the beginning of the bottle, from the neck pour, it's not the greatest whiskey you'll ever have, no. But it's a good departure point. It's a good place to calibrate your palate. Whether you're going for some heavier sherried whiskeys with higher ABV, or if you're going towards something peated, that, that would work too. Or if you're going for other blends with higher alcohol by volume contents, like, uh, for example, one of my favorites, the Cuddy Sark Prohibition. If you're going there, this is not a bad departure point. It's strictly a starter whiskey. It's first gear. It's getting moving. And once you go moving, you go to second gear, whatever that's going to be. And uh, this is a interesting little start to my night before I go for some things that are a little bit more premium. Slanchova. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>